All right. Praise God. All right. Great. Well, I hope this uh, works. Last time I did a video, I had to erase it because the wind was blowing and the sound didn't work very good. But anyway, uh, let's... Uh, okay, remember, uh, usually I go over this stuff time and time again because uh, when you hear it, uh, you start memorizing it. But looking at the Old Testament, if you look at the five major prophetic books, you can look at I for... Isaiah, then J for Jeremiah, who also did Lamentations, E for Ezekiel, and D for Daniel. So I Jed. And uh, you know, there's kind of a theme that goes through all of those books. Like when I just kind of drew them out, you see that you'll have on one side those things that are going down to destruction that are desolate and dry and you remember that uh, well in the Old Testament God says that you are desolate and in the New Testament Jesus said that your house has been left to you desolate dry but you see also that what Jesus did paying for sins that you have the Holy Spirit and the waters coming out and you see that in Ezekiel you know the waters that coming out of the temple they keep going higher and higher until you can't even wade across them but there is life coming out and then then that life and then that fruitfulness but on the other side there's not fruit fruit and see uh, John the Baptist was saying uh, that the axe is already at the root of the tree and so that that's going to be chopped down is going to be thrown into fire and so if we look at Jeremiah and that's what we're going to go over today is some of the things in Jeremiah and you see the same things. So Jeremiah, now Isaiah was, how, how long ago was Isaiah? That was around 722 BC when, when uh, let's see, it was Assyria that came down and destroyed the northern ten tribes that was called Israel. And you had Judah that was made up of Judah and Benjamin that was in the south. They were around Jerusalem called Judah. Now, they should have known better, but they continued to do evil. In fact, uh, you know, they should have learned from their sister of the, uh, the north, but they didn't. And they actually ended up turning from God, and they turned bad to where God was saying that they're like a, uh, a donkey in heat going after many lovers. And that, that seems kind of harsh, but, <laughs> you know, it's language we can understand. I trim horse feet, work with horses, and the people I work with, they have horses. They know what, what this stuff is like. They know what uh, working with animals is. So it's a language that even today we can hear and understand. You see how that was going down, and Jesus showed that Jerusalem would be destroyed because they had turned against God. Well, uh, the, the thing about it is you see the contrast, but you see the similarities to how uh, at the time of Jesus, they had rejected Jesus. Remember Jesus, and Isaiah showed that that Jesus would pay for our sins. Well, these other prophets also show that the Good Shepherd was coming and uh, the one who would pay for all sins was coming. And so, 40 years after they rejected God, then Jerusalem you know, it gave them time to share the gospel with those Jews because the Jews were all looking forward to the Messiah. And then they did that. And then uh, before Jer Jerusalem was destroyed and the temple was destroyed, because remember, God established a new temple. It's you in Christ. Precious stones fit together as a temple of God. There is no need for an earthly temple anymore. There is no, no need for a sacrifice again because we have one sacrifice that was coming. The seed, Jesus and his kingdom, the king and his kingdom, Lord, that all of us, all of Israel could be saved. The believing Jews, the first fruits, and then the believing Gentiles, the rest. I've gone down to Portland sharing the gospel down there and other places. In fact, my nephew who's in South Korea right now, when he had come off leave, I took him down to Portland and we were sharing the gospel. and. Uh, he actually led somebody to the Lord there too. So that was great to, to do that. And uh, oh, you know with all the riots they're having there, and you see people 
I mean, here we have a line of mothers that is kicking on the state building, trying to tear it down, and they are starting fires. So they are starting fires in our city that, you know, I had another niece that she would work with me with the horses when she was in high school. And then we would stop in Portland, you know, because I'd go through there twice a month. And we would stop, go to a coffee shop, go to some art galleries, look around at the statues and things like that. And now what they've done is burn them up. And uh, they act like they're innocent. But watching them lift their hands up and this stuff, it reminded me of worship. Because what they're really doing is they're against God, and they're, but they're actually worshiping an idol and they're having their bonfires with it. So let's read chapter seven. And what's interesting, if, if you read this Jeremiah seven, it starts out, the word, or the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, stand in the gate of the Lord's house and proclaim this word and say, hear the word of the Lord, and ye of Judah that enter into all these gates to worship the Lord. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. See, God has a place for us to dwell. Well, actually, it's in Him. Now, they could have dwelt there. They could have had His presence. But remember, Jesus finally said that your house has been left desolate. He was kicking them out, throwing over the tables, telling them what... They're, they're hypocrites. They're merchandising the things of God. And actually, we'll see that Jeremiah says the very same thing that Jesus was saying. Trust ye not in lying words, saying, The temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord are these. See, they're push, basing everything on, look, they're the ones who have the temple of the Lord, and God's going to just take care of them no matter what they do. No, they're doing things that are evil. Well, God is not going along with evil. God is not a hypocrite, and He's not to be mocked. And so, but they think they can do basically whatever they want. Not true. For if you thoroughly amend your ways and your doings, if you thoroughly execute judgment between man and his neighbor, if you oppress not the stranger, the fatherless, the widow, and shed not innocent blood in this place, neither walk after other gods to your hurt. See, there's shedding of innocent blood, and they're after other gods that they're making up to their own hurt. Well, you think about, you know, I was thinking about these mothers and all these people that are against God. And they're the ones who actually promote sacrificing their own children, abortions. And, you know, this one that they're doing here is called Black Lives Matter. Now, there are many groups that can be hypocritical. I mean, even within the Christian churches, sometimes they're hypocritical, and Jesus faces that head on. What does he say? Well, many will have said, Lord, Lord, done things in my name. I will have never known you. Depart from me, you who work iniquity. So he's even saying that to his own, people that are doing things in his name. But, uh, but anyway, we can see some of the hypocrisy within groups. And it's okay to look at hypocrisy and to be critical of things and look at it honestly, right? Uh, now Jesus said, of course, pull the log out of our own eye so we can help our brother. Verse 7, Then will I cause you to dwell in this place in the land that I gave to your fathers forever and ever. Behold, you trust in lying words that cannot profit. Will you steal, murder, and commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense into Baal? and walk after other gods whom ye know not, and come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, we are delivered to do all these abominations. No, God does not stand in abominations. That's not what he called us out for. He called us to be holy as he is holy, right? Verse 11, in this house, which is called by name, my name, oh, is this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your eyes? Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. Yeah, so that's what Jesus said. Do not make my father's house a den of thieves. That's what Jesus said when he, that's why he was knocking the tables over. And that's what these people were doing. And it was such a, a point that he was about to destroy Jerusalem and the temple. 
yeah, at that time, 586 BC with Jeremiah. Now, verse 12. But go you now unto my place, which was in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first, and see what I did to it before the wickedness of my people. So he had destroyed that. See, they think they're his people, but they're not acting like his people. And now, because you have done all these works, saith the Lord, and I spake unto you, rising up early and speaking, but you heard not. And I called you, but you wouldn't answer. See, God sent his prophets out early, speaking the word. Jesus was going out early, speaking the word. And there was many that come to him that they wanted to hear the truth because they knew they could hear the truth and the truth, truth would set them free. Now, where are we? So he called, but you didn't answer. Now, verse 14, Therefore I will do unto this house, which is called by my name, where you trust, and unto this place which I gave to you and to your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh. And I will cast you out of my sight, as I have cast out all your brethren, even the whole seed of Ephraim. Now, this is where we're starting. Therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up, cry, nor pray for them neither make intercession to them, for I will not hear thee. So at first, you know, he's talking about how, look, if you guys just turn from your ways, I'll make a place for you. But now it's come to, yeah, don't even pray for them. Verse 17, See thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood. Well, see, that's like in Portland. Aren't they gathering wood? They're trying to take the wood off the buildings to destroy it. And why would they do that? So they can break through the windows and destroy property? No, evil. You know, when you have that kind of a hatred in your heart, you know, the only thing that can solve that kind of hatred, and I had that hatred in me before I turned to God, it was just unforgiveness. And I could not get rid of it, no matter what I did. I had to actually turn to Jesus. When I turned to Jesus, boom, it just dissipated that, and I never had that again. So if you turn to him and ask him, he will help you. Uh, so anyway, let's see. So the children gather wood and the fathers kindle the fire. And think about those fathers that joined the mothers there in Portland too. And the women need their dough. Well, okay, what are the women needing their dough? I see them, boy, they had their hands on the fence and just kicking that building with all they had and they're acting like they're peaceful when they've just burnt everything up. Okay, so they're needing dough to make cakes too. Get this, the queen of heaven. So they're worshiping the queen of heaven. That's what they call it, the queen of heaven. So really they had to form their own gods. Now a lot of people, you know, they say they're atheists, but they still worship something. They are still worshiping something. What they've done is they've just set their self above God. Okay, so they worship the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings into other gods. Pouring out those drink offerings to other gods. Yeah, actually, see, I was, um, before I turned to Jesus, I was doing the same thing. I was looking for something spiritual. So I went on some spiritual quest down in South America, ended up in Bolivia one time, above the highest city in the world, Potosi. And they, they have mines there. And the Indians there wanted gifts, so I took them what they wanted, cigarettes, alcohol, coca leaves, and dynamite. And then you go in there. Now, before you go in, the beams are black with blood. So, because they put blood, they offer blood offerings, which they say llama fetuses and they say human fetuses, but that's no different than we do here. We are murdering thousands of babies through abortion, and that's, just offerings to Baal is all it is. So anyway, you go down in through these mines. Uh, after you light, light these lanterns that are put rocks in them and you put water and it releases gas and you light it. And so you, man, you could fall into holes and get killed, never find your way out. But they have altars to the devil under there where you're going to pour out some alcohol. You're going to put a cigarette in the, the devil's mouth. And what else do you do? Uh, coca leaves. Uh, and they're given offerings to uh, the devil and Mother Earth right there to get their silver. 
See, and they, they say they worship Jesus on the outside, but in there they're going to worship the devil to get their silver. Well, that's crazy. I didn't really believe in the devil at that time. I thought it was just a BS that Christians made up to control others. But then when I looked at what Jesus was saying, I saw nobody is like Jesus, and I turned to him, and he's, he's who helped me and saved me. But anyway, let's continue here. So they're worshiping the Queen of Heaven. They pour out drink offerings to other gods that they may provoke me to anger. So, yeah, they're angering God. Do they provoke me to anger, saith the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to confusion of their own faces? And uh, let's see. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, mine anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon man and upon beast and upon trees of the field, upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn and shall not be quenched. So anyway, it goes on and on. But you can see how, you know, man has not changed. That's the same way it was 720 years before Jesus, 586 years before Jesus, when Jerusalem and the temple were destroyed. It's the same way at the time of Jesus, when they rejected Jesus, the one that God sent to pay for sins, the Messiah, Jerusalem was destroyed again. But we do have Jesus that established a temple, you made up of people, that he dwells in you and you can dwell in him. There not, does not have to be another sacrifice. So we can continue to follow him, preach the gospel so people can hear the truth, and that truth can set them free. And then when you are before God, because He's going to come and judge, and I was just talking to somebody here earlier, they didn't um, realize that, that God was going to redo this whole earth. They said, why would He ever want to come back down here? You know, they think we just go to heaven. But no, heaven is going to melt, it says. If you read uh, the books of Peter, Peter's got two books. You can go ahead and read both of them. But you will see that the heavens melt, the earth is burnt and renewed, and the new heaven sets down on the new earth. See, that's after Jesus comes and judges. We meet him in the air, and then the judgment, and then the new heaven on the new earth. And the devil is put in a lake of fire, and those who choose to follow him. But the, new, the earth is for those who have turned to God, and there will be no sin. All right, because God did not make us to live in sin. He made us to live in love for eternity, not a short time. But when we meet him there in the air and he judges, he can say to you, well done, good and faithful servant. So praise God, continue to follow him, loving him and loving others in the name of Jesus. Amen.